really excited to share some of our great SEAL resources out with y'all. Um, is everybody seeing my screen share okay, hearing me fine? Excellent. All right. Um, so my name is Dylan Connolly. Uh, my pronouns are he and they. I'm joined by Sky Reed Mills, who uh, is going to be my co-host for this afternoon's uh, webinar, <clears throat> uh, and sharing some really great information all about the SEAL project with you. So here's our agenda for today. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start out uh, with a little bit of an icebreaker. Uh, then I'll be going over kind of a quick overview of the Solar Eclipse Activities for Libraries project or SEAL project. Talking a little bit about the solar science circulation kits that are available through state libraries across the country and in multiple territories. Uh, then I'm going to give a quick activity demonstration from one of those uh, uh, one of those kits, a uh, really fantastic book and activity called Moon Bear Shadow. Uh, talk a little bit about other available resources and upcoming trainings, and then open up the floor for a Q&A for y'all to ask me whatever you might be curious about. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with our icebreaker. So... Eclipses are a really great example of how uh, of an intersection between science uh, and culture. So eclipses have inspired all sorts of different beliefs, customs, celebrations throughout the world uh, and throughout history. So I thought it might be fun to talk a little bit about uh, what's your favorite connection between science and culture. Hello, all of our uh, late joiners. Uh, we're just doing our quick icebreaker right now. Uh, so what is your favorite connection between science and culture? Feel free to, uh, we're a pretty small group today, so you can feel free to unmute and share or throw it right in the chat if you feel like. While you're thinking about that, I'll share my favorite. I am a big dinosaur guy. I think you can see my Sioux poster from the Field Museum in Chicago right behind me. Uh, so uh, 2023 uh, happens to be the 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park, uh, which was just a huge moment in paleontology and and, uh, and uh, dinosaurs and pop culture. So I've got to spend the last several months annoying everybody in my life talking about the inaccuracies of, uh, of Jurassic Park, what they got right, what they didn't, uh, and most importantly, talking about all the stuff we've learned in the last 30 years about dinosaurs. Uh, so that's a really big one for me uh, about it as an intersection between science and culture. Uh, what about y'all? Have you done some programming that you thought really brought these two ideas together? Um, is there a particular book that you like? Like, what are some things that have intersected between science and culture either in your lives as librarians or your personal lives. Like I said, you can feel free to unmute or throw this right in the chat if you feel like. I like mythology, so I think it's really interesting how things like eclipses or different science, scientific events have been interpreted by different cultures in their mythology. Um, but I can't think of a program I've done around eclipses. So That's really cool, Amy. Yeah, I'm a big uh, mythology fan myself. In fact, I uh, just uh, read a book, a really cool book um, last year called Fossil Legends of the Native America uh, of the Americas that talked all about um, how uh, different uh, indigenous cultures all in North and South America uh, interpreted uh, fossil remains. It was a really, really great read. So yeah, mythology is a really great example of how um, kind of pre-scientific cultures have inter interpreted uh, things like dinosaurs or eclipses. That's a really, really, uh, Great thing. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else? Yeah, was a... go ahead. Oh, no, please, Vicki, go ahead. Um, for me, it's as I was a huge uh, Star Trek fan, the old ones, the beginning ones, and a lot of the gadgets that they had in the shows are now reality. It's very kind of cool. Same thing, you know, they, the watches, you know, talking through them, and it's all come true. So I think it's kind of cool. That's fantastic. I'm a huge Star Trek uh, nerd myself. And one of the things I'm, I'm uh, showing uh, my partner, uh, Deep Space Nine for the first time, uh, as that's kind of my in for them to Star Trek. And one of the things we think is always so funny is anytime you see them and they've got the tablets right, but they, they have multiple tablets. So you see these people with big stacks of pads, uh, of, like, uh, of iPads where it's like, they got the tablet right, but they didn't think we could get more than one document on each pad. So you end up, you 
with these desks covered with five or six pads deep. And I just think that's like 95% of the way there. <laughs> Almost there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, thanks for sharing, Vicky. That's a really, really great one. Uh, does anybody else got one uh, they might want to speak out about? It's cool if not. I, uh, I know it's a Thursday afternoon. Uh, if you're on the East Coast, it's near the end of the day. It's cool if you don't have the social energy right now. It's uh, just thought it would be a cool way for us to start thinking about um, how eclipses are an intersection between science and culture. And when we're doing our uh, eclipse programming, uh, a lot of people might not be approaching it, approaching it from a strictly scientific point of view. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on, start talking about the SEAL project. Uh, thanks for those of you who shared. Really, really appreciate uh, you speaking up. So the SEAL project is actually building off of uh, SSI's and NCIL's work from uh, the Space Science Institute and uh, the National Center for Interactive Learning's work from the 2017 Great American Eclipse. Uh, so if you participated in the 2017 uh, eclipse, uh, you might have uh, come across some of the resources we made available or gotten some solar eclipse classes from us. Uh, but we were able to provide uh, uh, resources and reach over two, uh, we were able to send out over two million eclipse classes for that 2017 eclipse. Uh, and we were able to uh, do professional development for libraries all across the country. Uh, and what we are doing this year, you can see uh, here, we have a map of all the libraries that participated all across the country, uh, uh, even not just on the path, but everywhere, because uh, most of the, uh, part, the eclipse was partially visible uh, for all across the country, not just on that path of totality. Uh, and so we, uh, our participating libraries were able to do over 35,000 science programs before, during, and after the eclipse, uh, reaching about 1.75 million people. Uh, and what we are doing, because we have the back-to-back -back double headers this, uh, this year and next year, uh, the annular solar eclipse uh, that's going to have that path from Oregon down through Texas on October 14, 2023, and the total eclipse that's going to be headed from Texas all the way up through Maine on April 8, 2024. This fantastic double header, we are going to be doing even more than we did in 2017. Uh, we have are close to distributing 5 million glasses uh, nationwide to libraries all over the country. We are doing in-state uh, or in-person workshops uh, at all in, in as many states as we can try and reach as well as territories. Um, really, really trying to get as well as providing all sorts of really, really fantastic resources, digital and otherwise. So the SEAL project, like I said, we're trying to get free eclipse glasses into the hands of librarians where uh, I'm gonna tell you how to get registered for those if you aren't already. We are uh, nearing the end of our distribution. Um, uh, so I highly recommend you get in that as soon as possible. Um, as of this uh, date today, August 10th, um, uh, which I'm saying that because this recording is gonna be put up on YouTube for reference for librarians who couldn't make it. Uh, we are offering up to 500 per app application per branch. We're asking branches to fill out individual applications for those libraries. Uh, once you fill out, you won't just get those classes. You'll also be registered for our uh, Stardeck community website and the SEAL community group there. Um, um, that The community website kind of looks uh, like a social media website. I'm affectionately calling it Spacebook. Um, it's a really great way for librarians uh, to interact with Eclipse experts, us here at the SEAL team. Um, really, really fantastic resource. You'll also be signed up for our newsletter. Uh, we send out a monthly newsletter with new Eclipse resources, upcoming trainings, really great way to keep in touch with the Star, uh, Starnet and the SEAL project. In addition to those free Eclipse classes, as I said, we're doing in-person trainings in all 50 states and four territories. I'll be talking about some upcoming workshops in just a bit. Uh, we are recording uh, all of our webinars uh, that we're doing. We're, we, uh, and we also got recorded training videos. Um, we have some really fantastic solar viewing equipment that we're sending out in those state library circulation kits. So we have training videos for all the equipment there, as well as leading virtual workshops. We're doing... Uh, uh, regularly these getting started with SEAL webinars. We also have other trainings coming up, like we had a spring training uh, series that was four webinars all about citizen science and how to do citizen science around the eclipse at your library and incorporate that into your eclipse programming. Uh, we have an activity uh, collection unboxing webinar that we're doing in just a couple weeks. I'll be talking about that in a bit, as well as stuff coming up in September, like a share-a-thon for librarians to share uh, eclipse programming ideas, share 
ideas around programming, activities, uh, types of events you're doing for your programming and share that with each other, as well as a what to expect leading up to Eclipse Day webinar where we're going to be um, sharing some memories from 2017 uh, from librarians who participated in Eclipse programming in 2017 and offering some advice uh, from the past. Um, we're also having those circulating kits in state libraries with solar telescopes, books, and hands-on activities. We are also providing access to scientists, volunteers, Eclipse subject matter experts, and other librarians through the StarNet online community. So as I said, we are doing in-person workshops. Um, here's a list of upcoming ones we've got planned for the next couple months uh, in Indiana, Tennessee, Texas, Kansas, Wisconsin, South Dakota, Oklahoma, Kentucky, and even we all, we're even going all the way out to Palau to do uh, one in the, for the Pacific Islands Library Association. Uh, so these um, are our upcoming ones that are scheduled. Um, I highly recommend contacting uh, your state library to find out more information uh, about uh, that's who uh, we're using as our point of contact across the country is uh, individual state libraries. So if you're interested in attending any one of these workshops, reach out to your state library association and they can get you hooked up with the information on how to get registered for that. Uh, so, as I said, one of the big things we're doing is the solar science circulation kits, which is a little bit of a tongue twister, uh, if you have to say that three times fast, solar science circulation kits. Um, but we have two different types of kits. These are also going to be available through your state library. Uh, uh, each state library is handling circulation a little bit differently. So uh, once again, contact your state library for details on how you can get your hands on these. Uh, these are circulation kits meant for individual library branches, not patrons. So these are uh, circulation items for you to check out for your library um, for whatever uh, circulation period that your state library has determined. Um, so I know Washington State is doing, um, they have a uh, already a, a system for state library circulation items for individual libraries. So they're using their default system. Some states are setting up new circulation patterns. Uh, reach out to your state library to find out more. So we have two kits that we're making available and we're providing two uh, copies of each kit to each state library. Uh, one kit is geared pretty much towards younger learners. It's got um, things, uh, objects that are more uh, kid hand size friendly. And then we also have one that's for multi-generational learning that has some uh, more complicated uh, items in there uh, to uh, play around with something that requires a little bit more adult hands-on setup. Um, but each kit consists of a container with the solar science equipment, uh, at least one book, and at least one hands-on activity. Um, if you're having trouble reaching your state library and you want to find out more about this, uh, my wonderful co-host, Sky Reed Mills, uh, who's on the call, is uh, the administration person. They're also our kit circulation guru. Uh, so their email address is on screen right now. Uh, go ahead and reach out to Sky if you have any questions about uh, getting a hold of one of these kits. Uh, so here's a breakdown of what the multi-generational kit uh, contains. It comes with a big, nice, sturdy container, a Coronado personal uh, solar telescope. So that is a, a pretty standard tripod uh, solar uh, telescope with a solar filter lens on there. So you can look through uh, the eyepiece and look directly at the sun, uh, either during the clips uh, or otherwise. Um, it comes with that telescope case, a telescope mount. Uh, when the Sun Goes Dark, which is a fantastic book that um, include, is kind of meant for multi-generational learning. Uh, that's actually written by the two astronomer consultants on the project, Andrew Fracknoy and Dennis Schatz. Um, it has some really, really cool, it's not necessarily a storybook, it's more of a story along book. It's got uh, some scenarios and descriptions of scenarios and then activities you can do to learn about solar science and the eclipse. Uh, that kit also includes two sunoculars, uh, which are binoculars with solar filters on them, uh, and a, a really fun activity called uh, Big Sun Little Moon, uh, which is a really cool activity where you can, uh, it's a hands-on activity where uh, you can have one small circular object and one larger circular object, and you have participants uh, get further and further away from each other until you can kind of cover the larger object with the smaller object, uh, explaining how uh, an object as little as the moon can co cover the sun creating an eclipse. 
our kit for younger learners also has that nice container. Uh, it has a Keplerian style solar uh, sun spotter telescope. Uh, this is a projection telescope where, that uh, projects an image of the sun onto a piece of paper. You can actually trace the sun and the sunspots visible on there. Really, really fun to play around with. Uh, it also has a book, an activity uh, called Moon Bear Shadow. I'll be demonstrating this a little later, but is a really fantastic way for younger learners to learn about how light creates shadow uh, and therefore how eclipses are created by the sun creating a shadow uh, over the moon or the moon creating a shadow uh, over the sun, excuse me. Uh, they also have some mini sunoculars. These are the kids hand size sunoculars that are really handy, uh, as well as a sorting game that I'm actually gonna demonstrate for you now called How Big, How Far, How Hot. Uh, so this is an activity from the uh, STEM Activity Clearinghouse, starting at STEM Activity Clearinghouse. Um, oh, and I've been many, you know, I forgot to tell y'all. Uh, Sky, would you throw the link bank uh, link in the chat as well? Any links we're sharing out today, all of this information is available in a, our Getting Started with SEAL blog post. Sky just put the link to that in the chat. That has links to the, the recordings of our virtual trainings, uh, links to all the activities we're talking about today, uh, all of the resources we're sharing out. That's a great place to get started. That also includes the link on how to get registered for classes. So back to the sorting games. Uh, so this is a really fantastic uh, sorting games. It can either be done digitally. It's a really great warm up if you're doing a hybrid event uh, with a solar system ambassador or eclipse expert. Um, there's also a printable version where you can have these uh, uh, on the table and have them sorted and you sort these in order of how uh, the objects, how big they are in comparison to Earth, uh, how far they are from Earth and how hot they are. Um, so you're seeing a question in the chat, Megan said, will each state library have the kits or only the ones listed earlier that are getting the training? I actually, we're, we're reaching all state libraries. I'll actually have a list a little bit later in the webinar, Megan, of all the states that are current, that currently have kits and we're working on getting them to all 50. Uh, we have had, we've only had uh, one or two states we haven't been able to get a hold of. We're still working on them though, to make sure that these kits are getting everywhere. So as I said, the sorting games is included in that younger learners kit. Uh, you work together to sort these laminated cards um, by diff in different categories. So the green bordered cards are you're sorting by size from smallest to largest. The blue border you're sorting from distance from closest to furthest from Earth, and the red border is by temperature from coldest to hottest. Uh, now, we'll just go through a few of these. We're not necessarily going to have to sort them all there, but I thought this might be a good way to get some audience participation going. Uh, so why don't we start out with the how big. Um, can anybody guess the smallest object on here? Go ahead and throw them, uh, throw that answer in the chat. We have Earth, Mars, the Moon, uh, some lions, and the International Space Station. Absolutely, yeah, lions are the smallest uh, of those. They're animals that live on Earth, so they've gotta be small enough to fit on planet side. So yeah, they're absolutely, the lions are the smallest. Um, uh, can we guess which is the biggest of these items? I'm gonna give you a hint, it's between Earth and Mars. Which one do you think is the biggest, Earth or Mars? Claire's guessing Earth, Earth? Absolutely. Uh, Earth and Mars are roughly about the same amount of land mass, uh, but the Earth has something that makes it a little heavier than Mars. Does anybody guess what that is? Hope's got it. Yeah, absolutely. Our oceans um, actually uh, add about a third more in, uh, in mass uh, than Mars. So even though there's the same amount of rocky composition between Earth and Mars, our Earth's oceans make it about a third heavier. There you go. So that's the big section. Now let's think about how far. Uh, so let's think about distance in turn from Earth. So we have the Sun, the planet Saturn, the Orion constellation and nebula and the Orion galaxy. Can anybody think what's the closest of these objects to Earth? Can 
Getting some answers coming in. Absolutely. Uh, the sun is the closest object to Earth. In fact, the distance from the Earth to the sun uh, is actually an astronomical unit. That's actually a measurement uh, that scientists use to describe distances uh, in the Earth, uh, in space. Uh, and so the distance from Earth to the sun is one AU or astronomical unit. Uh, and so the next object after that is uh, Saturn, uh, which is about 1 billion miles from Earth, so it's just about 10 AU. Uh, can anybody guess what the furthest object from Earth is, whether or not it's the Orion constellation or the Andromeda galaxy? Absolutely, we're getting some answers to the Andromeda galaxy. So the Andromeda galaxy is correct. The Orion constellation is a object, uh, is a collection of stars and a nebula inside our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Uh, so the Andromeda galaxy being a whole separate galaxy, even though it is our closest galactic neighbor is the furthest uh, of these objects. Now we'll go to the trickiest one. We are uh, thinking about temperature now. So uh, we have five objects here, a meteor, volcanic lava, a comet, the surface of the sun, or a sunspot? Which one of these do you think is the coolest object? Hope's guessing lava, Amy's guessing the comet. We've got comets and meteors. Excellent. So the coldest object is actually the comet. So comets actually are uh, icy, rocky objects, uh, don't give off a lot of heat of their own. So that's going to be the coldest um, of those objects. They, uh, Even though all of these give off light, um, comets are only reflecting light from nearby stars. Um, after that, we have uh, lava, which is the next coldest. Um, that's coming up from lava is uh, magma melted rock that's shooting out from the Earth's surface. Uh, and then the third um, object, the hottest object, is actually the meteor. Uh, so let's think about the hottest object now. Let's um, figure that out. The two choices are the surface of the sun or a sunspot. Which one of these do y'all think is hotter? Got a guess for sunspot? Sunspot again. Got a couple guesses for surface of the sun. All right, I'm gonna tell you, it's actually the surface of the sun. While the surface of the sun, uh, sunspots do exist on the surface of the sun, sunspots are darker because they are a place where uh, less reaction is going on. So they're actually cooler than the surrounding surface. And sunspots, just like the one you see on screen now, <coughs> you can actually view through that Sunspotter telescope uh, that's included in the uh, State's Library Circulation Kit available through the program. So that's uh, sorting games, how big, how far, how hot. As I said, that young, Younger Learners uh, Circulation Kit includes uh, laminate, printed laminated versions of all these cards for you to have this as an activity when you check out that kit. Um, it actually has two sets for each uh, category. So we just went through one of each, but there's two for size, two for temperature, and two for distance. Um, and so uh, really fantastic. There's also on the STEM Activity Clearinghouse uh, collection, uh, for SEAL, we have a, a digital version of this. You can either have it as a PowerPoint or print it as a, a PDF, so you can print your own copies. Or if you're doing digital or hybrid programming, uh, the PowerPoint uh, version is a really fantastic uh, digital warm up, kind of just like we did here uh, in this webinar. Uh, so the other activity uh, that is in, that we're going to be demonstrating today that's included in this kit is Moon Bear Shadow. Uh, so this is a really fantastic book written by an uh, author named Frank Ash uh, that's all about a young uh, bear learning how light creates his shadow. So the kit includes everything you need to run the activity. It's got the storybook. Uh, it's got a flashlight sun, uh, bear toys, and a toy tree, as well as a play mat that you can put these all on. Uh, as well as a laminated facilitator's guide, table signs, and challenge cards. So what I'm going to do now is um, going to stop my share and switch my camera, and I'm going to show y'all everything that's included in this kit. So this is as it will come in the State uh, Library Circulation Kit. Uh, here you have the storybook, Moon Bear Shadow. I'll flip through this real quick. So. Moonbear Shadow is a story of a bear who goes down uh, fishing 
And what he realizes is as he's trying to fish, his shadow keeps giving away his presence uh, to the fish and scaring them away. So he tries all sorts of different things in order to escape his shadow. He tries outrunning it, hiding behind a tree. Uh, he tries out climbing it, still can't get away from it. Uh, he tries nailing down his shadow, who among us hasn't tried that trick to escape their shadow once in their lives. Uh, he even tries burying it. Uh, eventually he gets frustrated, goes home, takes a little nap. Uh, and what happens is while he's taking his nap, the sun's position in the sky changes. So when he goes back to his fishing hole, what he realizes is his shadow is no longer revealing his position because of the passage of time. And he's able to catch fish just fine. It's a really simple, really fun uh, illustrated book. Uh, great for story times. Uh, and we also include in this kit all sorts of helpful stuff for you, uh, courtesy of Universe of Learning. Um, or this might be nice net actually, uh, <laughs> um, including stuff like this table sign that's explaining the activity uh, that'll be going on there. So explaining how flashlights, uh, act, you can act, use a flashlight like a sun uh, to create shadows, just like in the Moon Bear Shadow book. Uh, and a little explainer of how the moon shadow um, creates a shadow just like the sun creates a shadow on uh, Moon Bear. Uh, and that's what creates eclipses. Uh, a little demonstration for some uh, extended activities you can do with the flashlight if you want to set this up as a table display, as well as a facilitator guide uh, all about how to use uh, this, these resources uh, and use this in programming either as a table display, um, a facilitated activity after story time, or um, this is a really great uh, family activity you can use for Eclipse programming where older uh, learners uh, uh, follow along with this uh, with some younger learners. So let's go ahead and uh, so this is the actual activity itself. As I said, it comes with this flashlight sun, um, which you can use to simulate the sun, these two bear toys, a tree, and these challenge cards. So these challenge cards are a great way to foster discussion with younger learners, all about learning about shadows, um, as well as teaching them how the sun's position can create uh, a different uh, different shadow effects. So let's uh, look at this top one right here. Bear shadow scared the big fish away. Try to make bear shadow touch the fish in the pond. So if we want to do that, here we have, we can set up our bear here at the edge of the pond, grab our flashlight. And if I wanted to have his shadow touching the fish in the pond, uh, where is that going to need to be relative to, where am I going to need to set up the sun relative to bear? Anyone want to take a guess? You can either unmute, throw it in the chat. Upper right, yeah, absolutely. That is totally correct. You can see uh, you want to have it behind Bear, and you want to have the sun pretty uh, pretty far distance from Bear, so his shadow is nice and long. Absolutely. Uh, now, if we think about putting Bear's shadow behind him, it's just the opposite. So rather than having the Bear behind the sun behind him, you want to move that sun. So that shadow is positioned behind him instead. So each one of these uh, challenge cards has all sorts of, uh, is a great way to get younger learners. Um, you can either ask them questions like shine the sun down straight down on Bear from his, uh, above his head. Where is Bear's shadow? That's going to be well, completely beneath him. And then it also has questions to, for, to get uh, discussion questions, like where do you see the sky, sun in the sky at lunchtime? How does the shadow look at lunchtime? And that's a really great way to think about noon, the high, high sun creating little shadows underneath learners. So that's the uh, moon bear shadow activity that is included in the state library circulation kits. All right, so as I said, um, we have been sending out these kits. Um, we're working on getting them to, this is the list, a full list of states who have kits currently. Um, don't feel like you have to copy all this down, but look for your state right here. I'll also be providing, um, we're gonna be posting a link to a recording of this webinar today on Starnet's YouTube channel. Um, and uh, this uh, PDF of this slide deck, including all this information will be uh, linked in the video description for that. Um, but here you can see we've reached uh, I think it's 35, close to 40 states. Um, 
So we're doing pretty good. We're, we're still working on all 50, but if you're on this uh, list, if your state is on this list, you can reach out to your state library uh, to get a hold of one of these kits for you. So we do have uh, some other resources that we're making available to you. Um, so first of all, getting started. Oh, I have not, oh my goodness, I have not shared the screen again. There we go. Let me go ahead and thanks for catching that, y'all. <laughs> Uh, so here is the list of state library kits. I forgot to share that screen again. Uh, so here's the list. Um, if you're, uh, like I said, if, you're, uh, state, uh, if your state is on this list, your state library has a kit available for circulation. So now uh, we're gonna talk about some available and upcoming goodness resources that are available through uh, the SEAL project. So uh, if you wanted to go ahead and uh, uh, scan this QR code with your phone, that'll take you directly to our Getting Started with SEAL blog post. That's kind of a living document that we're keeping as we're adding more resources as we develop them, uh, as people send them to us. We've got a ton of stuff on there. Uh, Sky has been linking to it in the chat, and I believe just linked it again. Um, we have stuff on there uh, like a uh, really fantastic uh, solar eclipse booklet um, that was produced for us by uh, our astronomer cons consultants on the project, uh, Andrew Fracknoy and Dennis Schatz. Uh, we have things like our training videos linked on there, um, really cool uh, eclipse simulators so you can enter in your exact location and figure out how much of the eclipse will be available of, uh, visible uh, in your location in both October and April. Um, really cool uh, guides from uh, librarians and other consultants about how to do eclipse programming in your library, citizen science and eclipse resources, really, really cool stuff. Um, so uh, that also has a link there for y'all to register for glasses. As I said, right now we're offering up to 500 per application. Um, the application uh, just requires you to fill out all of your contact information as well as to get an, a letter from somebody in your administration or leadership uh, at your library. Uh, just so we, we know that they're aware of your desire to participate in this program and knows that it's gonna be supported from a leadership standpoint. Uh, once you're registered for those classes, if your application is complete, you'll also be registered for our newsletter, um, which is a really, really great way to keep in touch with us. We're going to be sending out that newsletter uh, all the way through the April eclipse, uh, providing all sorts of um, new information, including upcoming trainings, uh, new resources we're making available, all sorts of stuff. Uh, linked on there is an FAQ webinar um, that uh, our uh, the PI for the project, Annie Holland, held last year that actually goes into a lot more about the uh, science behind the eclipses, uh, ways that libraries can participate. Highly recommend checking that out if uh, you get the opportunity. We also have um, a, uh, if if you're familiar, if you've worked with StarNet before, you've probably heard us talk about the StarNet STEM Activity Clearinghouse. Um, we have a link to that in that Getting Started with SEAL blog post. Uh, the STEM Activity Clearinghouse is a collection of over 500 vetted activities that are perfect for deployment at libraries that are all STEM focused. Uh, and we've actually put together a collection on the clearinghouse just for solar science activities, um, including some that we've uh, had on the clearinghouse before and ones we've developed specifically for this project. Um, so we have stuff like uh, the uh, the photos here, an example of that top left one is a uh, how to build a, a projection a pinhole eclipse viewer out of any box you could possibly want to build it out of. It goes through the fundamentals of the science there uh, and includes a step-by-step -step guide on how to create it out of a simple box, but also um, includes an extension for an engineering design challenge uh, where you can challenge uh, maybe preteen or teen uh, participants uh, to design their own pinhole viewer uh, based on the four elements of what makes a pinhole viewer workable. Uh, we also have uh, how an activity on how to turn a solar oven or how to turn a pizza box into a solar oven, um, which is really, really cool. Um, and we include three different recipes on there that are all uh, vegetarian friendly as well as uh, allergy friendly. We have details on there um, and are food safe. So stuff that doesn't require um, uh, too much refrigeration on there. Um, if you are in an area that might be overcast, we also have an extension for that activity uh, to turn that solar oven into a solar still. That's what this uh, 
uh, bottom uh, images. And you can actually, um, even if you don't have that much sun, you can still create enough heat to distill water. You can take dirty water uh, and set up uh, some uh, weight on the, the, the plastic of that solar oven and actually distill fresh drinkable water out of dirty water. Um, so we have step-by-step -step facilitation guides uh, for all of these activities, including relevant background science, full color photos uh, of each step, uh, as well as Eclipse Science Connections. Um, we have how-to videos for many of these activities. Uh, and one of the things I love about the STEM Activity Clearinghouse that makes it such a great uh, resource for librarians is that we have uh, WorldCat book links uh, on each one of these to, for books that are related to each activity. Um, if you want to assemble book lists, or reading challenges or just get some books in your library or check to see what books you might already have uh, to uh, pair them with these uh, activities. Um, as I said, several of these have uh, extensions and adaptations, how to turn these into either take and make kits, um, hybrid activities, all sorts of cool stuff. And we're adding activities all the time to the clearinghouse. Uh, here's some other examples of activities, some uh, Eclipse chalk art activities that explain all about how shadows work and the movement of the sun, uh, how the sun creates energy using some painted water bottles. We even have a printable solar clock um, that, we can, uh, that you can print and use uh, to tell the time. We have region specific versions of that on the activity uh, to make sure that they work wherever you are in the continental US. We have training videos available um, for each one of those uh, pieces of solar equipment I described in the uh, solar circula science circulation kits. Uh, we have training videos for how to use those, how to set those up properly and make adjustments, make sure you're viewing the sun correctly. Um, we're going to be publishing soon a Solar Science 101 with uh, our director, Jamie Harold, who's an astronomer himself, and he's going to be talking all about the basics of solar science to get y'all briefed. Um, and we are also recording every single training webinar that we are doing for this project, uh, including the, this uh, orientation webinar that we're doing today. Uh, this is the updated version of the orientation webinar that uh, recording uh, that will be replacing the one that was posted in February. We have a four part series on citizen science and the eclipse. Uh, two, the first two parts are all about introducing citizen science and how to do programming. The second webinar is a step-by-step -step on how to do a daytime star party uh, around the eclipse and the sun. And then we have two other webinars for citizen science projects that are directly related to the eclipse. Uh, NASA's Globe Observer Program, uh, they're releasing, uh, if you've ever used the Globe Observer Program, they have a cloud observation program as well as a uh, mosquito tracking up, uh, uh, programs that are available on Android and iOS. Um, they're releasing a special version, uh, in addition to that app, all about recording observations during the eclipse. So we have a whole webinar about how to participate in that project. And we also have a really fantastic project called, <coughs> excuse me, Eclipse Soundscapes which is a really cool project where uh, you can set up a uh, recorder, an audio recorder, uh, a battery powder audio recorder three days before the eclipse and gather it three days after. And it's created this massive data set for both the annular and total eclipse about how uh, the sounds of nature change before, during, and after the eclipse. Uh, so you can find out how to get participate in that. If you've got a teen STEM club um, or you're partnered with maybe a local high school or middle school, uh, these projects are really, really great ways to get uh, especially preteen and teen uh, uh, visitors uh, participating in Eclipse programming. Uh, we also have that recorded, as I mentioned earlier, the FAQ webinar that goes a little bit into the solar science. There's a really great primer uh, for, for this project beyond even what we're going into today. We have some opportunities um, for finding partners if you wanted to get uh, some uh, scientific expertise at some of your Eclipse programming. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the Night Sky Network and NASA Solar System Ambassadors. We have links in that Getting Started with SEAL blog post on how to get in contact with those groups. We also have our own uh, group of Eclipse experts that we have vetted our, our wonderful astronomer consultants have put together a great group of volunteer Eclipse experts. Um, and we have posted the directory of those experts on the SEAL group on the StarNet community site. So if you uh, have, once you get registered for glasses, you will be uh, added to that site. Um, if you would like to be added to that site without registering for glasses, go ahead and reach out to Sky. Sky, if you want to throw your email into the chat one more time, Sky can make sure you get registered for that community site and uh, the newsletter uh, to have access to this. Um, once you get registered for the group, 
or if you already are, I'm just going to show you how to find that directory of Eclipse experts. Uh, so once you're registered for you, you'll go to groups uh, on your the community.starnetlibraries.org uh, page. Uh, once you're logged in, you just go ahead and hit that groups button. And all groups you're registered in, if this is your first time working with Starnet, the SEAL group should be the only one. Uh, so you'll go ahead and click on that. Uh, and here you can see it kind of looks like a Facebook group. You've got your feed, you've got places where you can have discussions. Go ahead and click that discussions button. And right up top, you'll see a pinned post from me that says Eclipse Expert Volunteer Directory. Uh, and that has uh, is a whole spreadsheet you can download that has uh, the Eclipse Experts contact info, their name, their contact information, uh, what uh, kind of programming they participated in with libraries before, their, uh, ex their personal um, expertise in science and what they would be willing, uh, really good to talk about. All sorts of great information for there for you to find an Eclipse expert to help out with your Eclipse programming. We also have upcoming trainings uh, for the SEAL program. Um, we are, as I was talking about earlier, we have the STEM Activity Clearinghouse Collection, all about solar uh, science uh, for the SEAL project. Uh, my uh, colleague Claire and I will be doing an unboxing webinar for that those activities on August 22nd. Um, the uh, the registration link for that is also going to be in the Getting Started with SEAL blog post. We're going to be demonstrating six different hands-on activities from the collection, including that solar oven activity I was talking about, uh, the how to build a safe Eclipse viewer out of any box. Really, really recommend uh, attending that if you are interested in some cool hands-on activities uh, to do for your Eclipse programming. Uh, on September 12th, we're doing an Eclipse Ideas share -thon. We're inviting libraries from all across the country to come. It's going to be an informal hour-long share uh, where folks can talk about the what they're planning on doing for the Eclipse, ask advice of other librarians uh, for the trouble they're running into on, oh, I really want to do X, Y, and Z, but I'm having a trouble with W. Um, and uh, because we found that librarians, y'all are just so resourceful, um, so experienced in doing a lot with a little. Um, so we want to make sure we provide an opportunity for you to connect with each other and ask advice of each other on how to do Eclipse programming. Uh, we also have a uh, what to expect leading up to Eclipse Day webinar that we're doing at the end of September on September 27th. And that is going to be pulling, we've uh, we started polling librarians who participated in the 2017 eclipse. Uh, we have a survey we did with a lot of librarians after the 2017 eclipse. Uh, we're going to be sharing out all sorts of uh, things I wish I knew before uh, I did Eclipse programming in 2017, uh, covering things like logistics, safe viewing, what to do if you run out of uh, Eclipse glasses before the day, um, all of those last minute, um, oh my gosh, I wish I'd thought of this three weeks ago. Um, congratulations, we're giving you a space to think about that a couple of weeks before that eclipse. Uh, some other resources, um, we have a graphics and logos blog post. So we have a wonderful in-house uh, graphic designer, Amy Brionis, who has created a whole suite of graphics, um, including this seal logo that you can see on the t-shirt that I am wearing right now. Um, that's a uh, uh, Soul the Seal uh, mascot for the Seal project. Um, we have a ton of those graphics. They're all available for you to use for marketing. We have uh, example social media posts that you can edit, um, flyers, uh, backgrounds for PowerPoints, um, all sorts of stuff. So um, few, those are all free to for you to use and will match all of the uh, programming that we are doing uh, or all of the graphics that we're using in our programming and you can go ahead and match those with yours if you like. Uh, the SEAL newsletter, as I mentioned, can't recommend getting that signed, uh, signed up for that enough. You will be automatically signed up for that newsletter once you're uh, registered for glasses, uh, but if you uh, are attending this and are interested in Eclipse resources but aren't necessarily registering for glasses uh, for uh, your library, go ahead and uh, reach out to Sky. That's sreadmills at spacescience.org. Uh, they've been putting their email in the chat. Um, you can go ahead and uh, reach out to Sky and they can get you registered for that newsletter mailing list, uh, even if you're not applying for glasses. Uh, we have that Eclipse group on the Starnet community website that I showed. 
uh, you how to access earlier, how to get that uh, Eclipse expert directory. Um, that is a really fantastic resource for, we have signed up all of our Eclipse experts for that community as well. So many Eclipse experts are introducing them on that site, reaching out to people uh, via that community site. And it's also a fantastic way for, there's a ton of discussions going on with librarians sharing ideas about programming, uh, getting advice from other librarians. Uh, it's a really, really great way to uh, kind of create a small community of practice around libraries and the upcoming Eclipse. Um, we also have this Eclipse 101 booklet. I'm actually going to show that off to you and real quick. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to remember to turn back the sharing this, uh, this time. But here, this is an Eclipse booklet. This is actually a printed copy of this is coming with each one of uh, your glasses orders. So if you're registered for glasses, you will be getting a physical copy of this. We also have a digital version of this, this that's uh, linked in the Getting Started with Seals blog post. Um, and uh, we have this available in digitally in both English and Spanish. Uh, this has some great uh, resources on introductions to Eclipse science. Um, re, uh, resources on um, helpful tips on how to do uh, eclipse programming, um, how to safely view the solar eclipse, ways to view the solar eclipse if you don't have glasses, like projecting through uh, uh, a colander or creating a pinhole viewer of your own, um, how to create a projector using a uh, binoculars on a tripod, um, all sorts of fun stuff, ideas for eclipse programming, and we even have a shareable set of two handouts. Um, one on this page, which you can uh, copy and hand out about safe viewing, as well as this page, which has a map uh, for the annular and total solar eclipses uh, for you to share out uh, to see where people can write down notes about where they, uh, how much of the eclipse is gonna be viewable uh, in your area. So that's the Eclipse 101 booklet that is also included, will be uh, included in your kits for uh, uh, the, uh, once you order your glasses as well as uh, available digitally. Sharing my screen again. All right, so that is the information I have to share with you. Uh, now I thought I would open up the floor and if y'all have any questions about anything, feel free to ask. And we're a pretty small group, so you can either put a question in the chat or if you wanna just unmute and ask away, go right ahead. don't have any questions. Uh, great presentation. You did a lot of talking in 45 minutes. <laughs> um, but I did want to mention that we were a, a NASA partner library for the 2017 eclipse. It's a fabulous experience. A small community. There are 8,000 in my county. I'm a county library. It was a great experience. A lot of work went into it, but nothing that was not manageable by six of us. Um, we had a wonderful turnout. And the resources that you've talked about are are just, they're worth all of your effort, folks, to go and visit the sites um, and download and use all the, it's so nice to have somebody else do the thinking for a small library. And all we have to do is um, visit there and pull out programs. It, it's a great thing. So kudos. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. That's really gratifying to hear. I was actually, I wasn't at uh, SSI yet in 2017. Um, I was working at a uh, small natural history museum in Rhode Island called the Roger Williams Natural History Museum. Uh, and we actually ended up getting some Starnet glasses from a local library who wasn't doing Eclipse programming on the day. Uh, so it's really great to hear that uh, you had such a gratifying experience and that uh, it's it's great to get that endorsement uh, for the resource we put together. Uh, Kathleen asked, where do we find the Clearinghouse collection? Um, I'm putting a link uh, in the chat right now, clearinghouse.starnetlibraries.org. Uh, that is the Clearinghouse website. On the landing page for that, we actually have uh, eight different collections, our feature, current featured collections um, that you can, uh, that's the seal one, if you look for, saw the seal logo right there, uh, you can find that collection um, on there as well. Um, 
Cameron asked, I missed the first half of this webinar due to desk scheduling. This is available afterwards. Absolutely, Cameron. I'm actually, uh, the link that Sky sent, um, I'm going to be replacing that on a, a playlist uh, in the Getting Started with Seal blog post, which Sky will link right now in the chat. Um, I will have a link to the recorded version of this webinar that I will post later today. Um, Hope asked, uh, what is the timeline for Eclipse Glasses delivery? Uh, when should I expect them if I've already been approved? Right now, um, and Sky can speak a little bit more to this if I'm uh, saying anything out of line, but right now, if you have registered for glasses and gotten that uh, application approved, you will receive them before the Eclipse day. We have, we are shipping them out every day, all the time. We are, we are working the way through the queue. Um, but uh, yeah, you should, we don't know, we can't give you an exact timeline, but if you want to reach out to Sky, um, that's um, using their email, sreadmills at spacescience.org. I'm sure Sky can throw that email in the chat once more if you want to copy it down. Uh, Sky can direct, uh, check on the status of your shipment of glasses directly if you wanted to get more, a more, more firm timeline. Um, but it varies based on just kind of, uh, we are a team of about 10 people sending about 5 million glasses uh, out nationwide. So we're going as fast as we can, but that timeline depends on uh, office availability and FedEx, et cetera, et cetera. Cameron also asked, uh, I want to know if there are resources that are in Spanish or better yet bilingual that you can recommend. I saw a small amount in the activities from the Starnet website. I was wondering if there's more elsewhere. Um, we are translating all of our Eclipse activities into Spanish. Um, we have made those available on our website. Um, I have, uh, I'm actually adding a section uh, this week to the Getting Started with Steel blog post uh, that's going to have resources in Espanol. Um, but we definitely already linked on there is the uh, Eclipse booklet, um, which is available in Spanish uh, digitally and we have a link to that on the um, the, uh, the getting started with seal blog post we also if you are looking for activities uh, if you go to the stem activity clearinghouse um, the uh, if you filter if you go to the search option there is an uh, ability for you to search for bilingual and Spanish activities um, so we have some activities that have Spanish translations as well as some that are exclusively available in Spanish uh, so that's a great uh, resource for you to check out um, if you uh, need anything more than that please don't hesitate to reach out to me and I can direct you to uh, more Spanish resources we have available and I'm throwing my email in the chat. It's dconnolly at spacescience.org. Uh, Megan, if you uh, check to see if your library will get the kits if they're not on the list. As I said, there are some states that we are uh, still looking uh, to, to hook up with those state libraries to get those kits to you. You can either reach out to your state library directly. Um, if, uh, I would greatly help us if librarians are reaching out to their state libraries and saying, hey, we heard about these kits. Can you make sure that you're getting them? Um, but if that doesn't work, you can also reach out again to, not to flood your email, Sky, apologies profusely, but uh, reach out to Sky, uh, who is uh, handling that distribution, and they can give you some more details on if and when uh, those will be shipped to your state library. Sorry, can you hear me? I don't yes. talk in the middle of nowhere, so I'm, my sound might be bad. Um, but uh, Illinois specifically, we've had trouble contacting your state library or Department of Libraries. So um, we're still trying to find, I believe, the appropriate contact. Um, so if you know anyone at the State Library of Illinois, please email me their contact info um, because we would love to get them their kits. Um, and we've been having a lot of trouble, I believe, coordinating that, um, at least the last I heard. Um, so, yeah, and I, we've heard that question a few times from Illinois, so I apologize that, that we're still trying to uh, figure that one out. Um, I'll also say just um, in terms of the, in terms of glasses, um, I think, yeah, everything Dylan, you said was correct. The one thing I'll say, um, just while we're here, is we are getting pretty late in the game. Um, if you are on this call and you've kind of been signed up for glasses, um, when I do that, I would also um, directly, um, definitely to anyone who's attended a webinar, you know, um, we want to get you glasses. Um, but any applications put in now, I just like have no way to actually 
guarantee they'll be made, but we do want to prioritize people who are showing up and like clearly want to distribute classes. So please email me that you registered and I'll, I'll try and make sure that we can get you glasses. And um, because we definitely are getting to the point where we have to say no um, to some amount of people. Uh, additionally, if you've signed up already and are emailing, emailing me, which everyone is, um, if you have anything that you've planned for early September, like you're like, we really have made plans for the first week of September. Um, I can't guarantee classes will show up then, but we may be able to just like expedite a few for you to do an initial um, workshop or whatever. So definitely let me know and, and we'll try and make it work because we're not trying to, we want to be slow and there's a lot of stuff going on. As Owen says, we're 10 people, but we, we really want to actually have them in your hands, not leave you um, wanting. So I hope that actually came through and I don't just sound like a seagull, but um, anything else to Thanks, say? Thanks, yeah, you were a little garbled there, for, but the one thing I want to emphasize is that um, I mentioned earlier, we are close to distributing our 5 million glasses. So we've already cut down the amount that um, of glasses we're making available for new applicants. If you are thinking about registering for glasses, especially if you're perhaps in the path of totality for the April eclipse, we are not doing separate uh, uh, distributions of glasses uh, for the annular and the total eclipse. We are asking every, it's a first come first serve for both. Um, so if you are thinking about registering for glasses, get that registration in now. The uh, the link is a SurveyMonkey uh, link that is available in the Getting Started with Seal blog post that uh, Sky has been sharing over and over again. Get that application in now, even if you are not in the path of the annular eclipse, because we will not be uh, doing a separate round for the total. So. Uh, uh, if you want glasses, get those that application in now. Uh, Donna said, thank you so much, Dylan. It's great organization as a treasure of information and resources. You've used our ideas and stuff for years and brag about you as much as possible, even our youth STEM centers. Thank you so much, Donna. That's really, really gratifying to hear. Uh, it's great to know that our work is appreciated and uh, that we're actually having the impact that we want to have. So thank you so much for saying that. All right, we got just a few minutes left of our hour. Um, does anybody have any other uh, questions, comments, concerns that they want to share uh, with us? Um, if you have any logistics questions, um, we'll try and get those answers. Um, Hope said, I don't plan on handing out too many classes before the eclipse day itself because we're likely to get a big crowd. I promised some glasses to a local school, but plan to do other programming in the eclipse leading up, so no hurry. Excellent. Also, if you are planning, say you are in the path of totality, but you're planning on doing some programming for the annular eclipse, one of the activities on the STEM activity clearinghouse is we have a uh, printable, foldable class, uh, glasses uh, case that you can decorate yourself um, and that makes a good activity in its own right. Uh, so if you are planning on doing active uh, programming for both of eclipses and you have um, the capacity, uh, one thing you could do is print out a bunch of those glasses storage cases, either store them at the library for uh, participants between the October and April eclipses, or um, ha send them home uh, with those eclipse uh, storage cases so that uh, visitors can store those for six months between the eclipses as well. Uh, so that's an, another thing uh, you can do activity wise and to uh, promote safe storage of your glasses between those eclipses. So yeah, if you have any further questions about uh, kit distribution for your state libraries uh, or your glasses order, uh, reach out to Sky. Sky is handling all of that logistics and they can direct you and get the information you need. Um, their email once again is s3mills at spacescience.org. Um, I wanna thank y'all for taking an hour out of your busy weeks to come and join me and learn some of this great information uh, and uh, some of these resources that we've been sharing out. If you have any questions at all, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or Sky. Um, and please bookmark that Getting Started with Seal blog post. We are adding uh, resources and updating that all the time. Uh, so you can always check that out. My email is also at the top of that blog post if you have any questions about any of the resources that we're making available there. Um, so yeah, once again, thanks for joining us. And uh, I hope you all have some great Eclipse programming and uh, looking forward to seeing you around the Starnet community site and seeing what kind of programming y'all come up with. So thanks so much and have a great rest of your afternoon.